Good morning once again for uh, morning prayer, excuse me, for matins, a morning prayer from the ELW. Oh, excuse me once again, that's the live aspect when you have a beard or a mustache, so I had to clear off the palate there. Um, for those of you who are new to this, um, it's just morning prayer. I will be going over uh, the ELW morning prayer, which starts on page 298, small numbers, if you have a hymnal. Uh, I won't be singing anything this week. Hey, Joanna. Um, I won't be singing anything this week. Uh, I'll be learning that hopefully for next week. I'm more familiar with the Green Books version. Um, but I'll be going through speaking all of the parts of the morning prayer. If you have the hymnal at home, or if you just know the service, somehow God bless you. Uh, but you can just continue along. You can repeat words. You can speak over me. Uh, you can even comment on what I'm saying if you want. You know that since this is live um, and I don't have any producers, it's just me and the camera, uh, my dogs, my cat, my children, anyone in my family uh, could walk by. I may have to talk to them and say, hey, I'm doing something live, uh, just to give them a heads up. So um, in addition, we'll have a, a, one of the readings and I'll see whether or not anything sparks anything in my head as I'm reading it and offer a little something on there. So without further ado for these Monday, Wednesday, Friday morning prayers, uh, let us begin with a dialogue and doxology. And it's a different one from the ones I've used on Monday and Wednesday of this week. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, O God, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Praise to the blessed and holy trinity, one God who gives us life, salvation, and resurrection. Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen indeed. O come, let us worship and praise him. Come, let us sing to the Lord, let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. You should notice that's uh, a recurring theme as it'll happen uh, continually throughout this. Let us come before God's presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to the Lord with psalms. For you, Lord, are a great God and a great ruler above all gods. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. In your hand are the caverns of the earth. The heights of the hills are also yours. The sea is yours, for you made it, and your hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. For the Lord is our God, and we are the people of God's pasture and the sheep of God's hand. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. The reading today from the Daily Lectionary for Friday, May 8th, Year A, is a reading from Acts chapter 7. Um, and it leads up to the reading that we'll be hearing from Acts uh, chapter 7, later in chapter 7 on Sunday for our worship service. Acts chapter 7, verses 1 through 16. Then the high priest asked him, Are these things so? And Stephen replied, Brothers and fathers, listen to me. The God of glory appeared to our ancestor Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia, before he lived in Haran, and said to him, Leave your country and your relatives and go to the land that I will show you. Then he left the country of the Chaldeans and settled in Haran. After his father died, God had him move from there to this country in which you are now living. He did not give him any of it as a heritage, not even a foot's length, but promised to give it to him as his possession and to his descendants after him, even though he had no child. And God spoke in these terms, that his descendants would be resident aliens in a country belonging to others, who would enslave them and mistreat them during 400 years. But I will judge the nation that they serve, said God, and after that they shall come out and worship me in this place. And then he gave him the covenant of circumcision, so Abraham became the father of Isaac and circumcised him on the eighth day. And Isaac became the father of Jacob and Jacob of the twelve patriarchs. The patriarchs, jealous of Joseph, sold him into Egypt. 
but God was with him and rescued him from all his afflictions and enabled him to win favor and to show God wisdom when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt, who appointed him ruler over Egypt and over all his household. Now there came a famine throughout Egypt and Canaan, a great and great suffering, and our ancestors could find no food. But when Jacob heard that there was grain in Egypt, he sent our ancestors there on their first visit. On the second visit, Joseph made himself known to his brothers, and Joseph's family became known to Pharaoh. Then Joseph sent and invited his father Jacob and all his relatives to come to him, seventy-five in all. So Jacob went down to Egypt. He himself died there as well as our ancestors. And their bodies were brought back to Shechem and laid in the tomb that Abraham had bought for a sum of silver from the sons of Hamor and Shechem. The word of the Lord. So, a brief uh, thought, a brief word on this lesson. Uh, hey there, morning, Matt. Uh, a brief word on this lesson from Acts. Uh, as I said, it's going to lead into the reading from Acts that we'll hear on Sunday morning uh, in our weekly lectionary uh, for worship services. And what's happening is this is Stephen is just giving an accounting. He is giving uh, a summary of everything that God has done through the scriptures and basically pointing, going to be pointing to the fact eventually where God did all these things in the Old Testament and then God did these things with Jesus. And through all of those things, everything was leading up to Jesus and to his crucifixion and his resurrection and they messed up because they killed Jesus. So this is Stephen's speech to the council. He's giving it. It's kind of just a summary statement and it's leading into uh, it's leading into what I said will be happening on Sunday. The dogs are getting a little rowdy right now because I have not fed them breakfast yet because I was focused on this. All right. So, move on with the Gospel Canticle, the words of the Gospel Canticle, uh, which is a, a different hymn th today than the one I've been doing. Blessed are you, Lord, the God of Israel. You have come to your people and set them free. You have raised up for us a mighty Savior born of the house of your servant David. Through your holy prophets, you promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. You promised to show mercy to our forebears and to remember your holy covenant. This was the oath you swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous before you all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way, to give God's people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Continue with our prayers. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Mighty God of mercy, we thank you for the resurrection dawn, bringing the glory of our risen Lord who makes us new every day. Especially we thank you for the sustaining goodness of your creation, for the new creation in Christ and all gifts of healing and forgiveness, uh, for the gifts of relationships with others, for the communion of faith in your church. Morning, Carol. Merciful God of might, renew this weary world, heal the hurts of all your children, and bring about your peace for all in Christ Jesus, the living Lord. Hey there, Rick. Especially we pray for those who govern nations of the world, for the people and countries ravaged by strife or warfare, warfare for all who work for peace and international harmony, for all who strive to save the earth from carelessness and destruction, for the church of Jesus Christ in every land. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have protected us through the night from all harm and danger. We ask that you would also protect us today from sin and all evil, so that our life and actions may please you. Into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies, our souls, and all that is ours. Let your holy angels be with us, so that the wicked foe may have no power over us. And we continue with the Lord's Prayer. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God, Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, bless and preserve us. Amen. So pray that you have a good day. God loves you. And uh, we'll be having on Facebook Live at 1030 on Sunday morning a children's message. And kind of like an expanded children's message. Really meant for everybody, but has a focus on children. We'll also have uh, beginning at 830 on Facebook and YouTube um, and our website, I believe, at 8.30 in the morning, a link to watch the worship service uh, that's been prepared um, for this weekend. It's still in the making right now. So God bless you, and uh, if I don't see you over the weekend, God loves you, and I'll see you on Monday. Have a great day.